OSG, OSG, change the game. Come together, bringing leaders, we don't play. Make a difference, being different, switching lanes. OSG, OSG, change the game. So I am now an assistant principal at an elementary school in Bushwick, Brooklyn. That's where I'm on my way from right now. Uh, Dennis, I know him as the pusher. Because when I first met him, when I was working in Harlem, fresh out of working from behind the gates of jail. Uh, now tell him like, what that I means. Not... Tell him what that means, though. Tell him what that really means, behind the, okay. behind the gates. So I worked as a correction officer for eight years on Rikers Island before making a change into coming into becoming a teacher. So I met Dennis, and he showed up to my class. I didn't know who he was. And so I kind of acted like, I said, how are you doing? And I just kept it moving. And then from there, like, he took me underneath his wing. And I was just like, you know, even when it came to leadership, I'm like, no, nah, I don't I don't want no parts of leadership. I'm good. Like, but he was like, people that, you know, people that are called to be leaders, they never want to be leaders. And so I'm grateful that he pushed me. And Rochelle Hines is also my mentor. Like, I love her to like to life. Like, she definitely prepared me working with Roe Ro has definitely prepared me for this uh, position and even the time that I've spent with Dr. Addo has also um, helped me in this position so I am grateful for the divine connections that God has definitely placed in my path that has helped nurture me and grow me and saw the leadership potential and wasn't afraid to like co-sign and help me along the way so um, I'm forever grateful. Absolutely. So Juanita, how many years have you been in education? Ah, man, this is my eighth year. And I was telling um, Dennis that, like, when we were talking this week, I was like, yo, I left corrections in my eighth year. I was about to get promoted to captain. They thought I was crazy. They thought I lost my mind. I also thought I lost my mind because I took, like, a $50,000 pay cut, and I'm a single mother. So I was like, okay, God, all right, I know I heard you. But, like, just to make sure, like, did I really hear you? I got two kids. You know, this is a $50,000 pay cut. Um, but I will tell you, God is good because he has sustained us this whole time. Never missed a meal. Never went hungry. Just in the process, I've been able to write books. I've been able to do a lot of different things. And that was one of the books that I was able to be a part of. Again, this Dennis helped me connect with the young lady. And I became a co-author. And I became an Amazon bestseller when it came out. Uh, so that was really good for me. But yes, this is my eighth year. So the eight, same time in corrections where I was about to get promoted, but I resigned is now the same time where I'm in my eighth year of teaching and I get promoted. Leaders are willing to make sacrifices. You know, what Lays has done this week by going up to Harvard, um, I'll, I'll let Lays talk about it more, but, but Lays, I think when I speak about leadership and innovation and people that are inspiring other people and motivating people, um, even if that means you got to drive them up there, you know, and sit, sit, sit in classrooms, I need you to take a moment just to let people understand, mm -hmm. you know, what, what, what leadership is about and what you've been doing the past few days while up there in Cambridge, Massachusetts. So, so my brother, Gus Johnson, uh, he, he, he graduated Howard university, um, probably one of the top play-by-play -play guys in the country. He wanted to get his master's in business and all those things. And he's like, yo, man, I'm going to go to Harvard. And a month later, they, they, they accepted him into Harvard and we drove up and part of the project was to do something that we were doing. Now, I told him, I think that he was just watching OSG and was like, how can I figure out a way to bring my OSG family into um, this level of education? So a month later, after various steps of approval. We're sitting in, we're sitting in Harvard Square next to St. Peter's Church, and we're sitting in the classroom with some of what's supposed to be the greatest minds in the world, the movers and shakers, the creators of systems. And you know what? I got on my OSG hoodie. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and we're sitting there talking to these guys. And let me tell you something. I love everybody. I appreciate it. And, I, and I, listen, I'm from Brownsville, Brooklyn. I'm from down the block where D is right now. There's no way you could have told how Mark said it, uh, 15, 12, 13, 14 year old ladies taking the taking his R1 bus pass, getting on the A train to go to go down to Green Street, uh, going down to uh, 27 Green to Brooklyn Tech to think that I would ever be in a situation where I could be sitting in these hallowed grounds 
to to represent my family and and all the great things we're about to do being up here. So yeah, man, it's all about commitment and 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 being committed to our movement. And it couldn't didn't have to be Gus. It could have been any one of you who would have said to me, "This is what I want to do." D already knows that about me. I would be there and I would support you because to me, ain't nothing nothing more important than my click and what we do. So thank yeah. you for giving me the opportunity to talk about it. As educators, it's, it's very important that we always have context and that we name it, right? And so what's being discussed here, and I want to resonate with what Chancellor Banks said last week when he spoke about the fact that uh, with the budget in New York uh, NYC DOE, upwards of 35 billion, 0. 0.03 of it goes to black businesses. So the conversation that we're having really is a conversation around collective economics, right? And, and, and harnessing the power of collective economics, harnessing the power of our culture, leveraging politics uh, so that we can move forward uh, together as a people in this work, because if we don't do it for ourselves, nobody else is going to do it. The second thing I wanted to also resonate is this is February. This is Black History Month. And never let it forget that we weren't we didn't originally come to these states as enslaved. We came as free men first, as navigators, as businessmen, as seamen, et cetera. So again, this is Black History Month, and I didn't want to go um, without uh, lifting that and resonating that. And the work that we're doing is walking in the footsteps and honoring those who have come before us because there's so much more work to still do, and we are the ones to get it done. And if when we look up 10 years from now, 20 years from now, we don't see if we're in the same place, like Dr. Dennis always says, then what have we really done? In any given week I get to visit at least seven schools and y'all are really leading right y'all are like real leaders y'all are out here because I don't take any clients that I don't like and I don't believe in right so I only take on client because when I come to your school I am a part of your school culture I will spend time in your school I'm gonna get to know your kids I'm gonna get to know your parents because I can't coach and support you from the outside I gotta be within so I spent a lot of time in schools and what I found was y'all out here leading, but forgetting, but mixing up leading and managing, right? So things that you supposed to, and Malik and I and his team, shout out to uh, East New York Middle School for Excellence. We came, we had this ep epiphany because I, because he was talking to me, his team was talking to me and I, about, you know, some people weren't coming on time or doing what they're supposed to do. Should they coach them? I was like, coming to work on time is compliance. You don't coach compliance. You manage compliance. Okay? Like, so a person not knowing how to deliver instruction is development. So that is coaching. But it's development and there's accountability and, and compliance. And most of the time, we spend too much time in the gray area of holding people accountable for things you should be developing them in and then developing, spending time trying to developing in places where you need to hold people accountable. So what you end up having is a fracture in your culture and not moving your school. And as a leader, you're spending time managing and breaking the culture and not moving because you have mixed up the two.